Now, extreme dry weather across North Africa is threatening to become another financial headache for Morocco, Tunisia and Algeria. Now, along with Egypt, the three countries are among the world's biggest wheat importers, with levels highly sensitive to the results of the local harvest. Importers in Morocco expect shipments to rise next season once last year's ha harvest has been worked through. They say the government should suspend custom duties on soft wheat to ensure adequate supplies to the market. We've previously reported about the El Nino related drought in southern Africa and now the United Nations says that these conditions are likely to dominate the first part of 2016. The current El Nino event has started in uh, March 2015, um, has peaked in December, um, being one of the probably the strongest in record and will wind down uh, towards the middle of 2016. Uh, its effects however will be felt all the way to early uh, 2017. Now, as this abnormally dry weather threatens North Africa, an El Nino-induced drought is threatening not just South Africa, but the whole region, from Cape, from the Cape uh, to Ethiopia. Now, we've seen about 10% of the population is facing farming right now. Well, let's discuss the implications uh, with Angelo Coppola. He's joining me now in Johannesburg. Angelo, welcome to the show. And, of course, Angelo, the UN is saying about 14 million people may face a starvation because of this drought that's going on. Now, how bad? is the situation in South Africa, right, South Africa right now and what of course are the budgetary implications to the country? Well Ucha, today we heard that some 40 percent of South African households are food insecure. We also heard that many poorer families are spending around 40 percent of their monthly income on food and that percentage is going to be increasing monthly as food, food inflation rockets because of the drought. The drought's also pushing some 50,000 more people below the poverty line. And that poverty line set at around $31 a month. On the production level in South Africa, we know that in quarter two last year, the agricultural sector contracted by 19%. And in the following quarter, it shrunk by another 12%. And that's not great news because with that contraction comes more maize imports. And with the rand hovering at around 16 rand to the U.S. dollar at the moment, there's going to be a lot more pain to follow. Ucha? Mm -hmm. And Angelo, as we said, this is a problem that's not just affecting Southern Africa, but North Africa as well. Now, Yasser Hakim is actually joining us in Cairo right now. Yasser, welcome uh, to the show. Thanks for joining us. Now, with drought looming in North Africa, uh, neighboring countries like Tunisia and Morocco are facing cuts in agricultural output. Now, uh, we're also going to see rising food import costs and so on. How do you see this impacting Egypt and, of course, the region this year? Well, for Egypt, it could be different because Egypt is not faced with the same uh, drought issues as uh, Morocco and Tunisia at the moment. And this actually may uh, be of uh, an advantage to Egypt, so it can at least try to export. Egypt's exports have stopped in the last couple of years, uh, maybe because of the political instability. Importers from, uh, from Europe were uh, uh, shied away from working with Egyptian uh, farmers uh, and Im exporters. Uh, for monetary reasons, for, for political reasons as well. So the market has been saturated with agricultural products in Egypt, uh, and this could be a, 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 some kind of a breakthrough for them so they can have a new market that can they, they can export uh, their products. They have not been exporting much to North Africa. Most of Egypt's exports were to Europe, uh, and, and this uh, can offer uh, a new uh, market at, the, at this point, Egypt's agriculture uh, production uh, has increased in the last year. It's been going down for like six, seven years, uh, and and it was the, the land was uh, barren. It, it was not used for for agriculture. It was used for building houses instead of uh, growing uh, food. And now the the, the new uh, political uh, and uh, laws uh, have restricted this uh, kind of uh, agenda. And now more farmers are 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 agri are growing food and, and they are looking for new markets. Mm. Well, actually, Angelo, the situation is quite uh, serious, or the situation is getting serious in South Africa. In fact, ratings firm Moody's actually came out today saying that South Africa's weak growth outlook will weaken its ability to tackle uh, this severe drought, amongst other issues, of course. Uh, now, what really are the government's projections uh, and plans to deal with this going forward? Well, government projections on the maize crops are on the positive side. They came out last week, 
and they showed that there are more crops were planted earlier. The issue here, though, is that those estimates were done a month early because the authorities were getting a bit concerned about the impact of the drought, so they wanted to get a quick sense of where we stood. So it was looking positive a week ago. Of course, much more rain is needed if those crops that have been planted and the late planted crops are to survive. On the funding side, however, the government can still tap into financial markets for loans if they need to fund any requirements. The country hasn't been downgraded yet and the cost of borrowing isn't too high at the moment. So there appears to be no major concern on that level. On the sourcing level, it seems that there's enough supply and enough willing sellers internationally. This is probably spurred on by the high futures price in the maize market at the moment. Ucha? Mm. Well, yeah, sir. what about you? I mean, the United Nations Food Agency says that world food prices fell to near a seven-year low uh, in January after, of course, falling for four straight years. Now, positive revisions for wheat production, however, uh, saw it raise its estimate for world cereal output in 2015. What does this mean for Egypt? What is the outlook going forward? Well, for wheat, it's kind of different because Egypt is considered the largest importer of wheat in the world. And uh, any rise in prices of wheat uh, or improvement in the prices actually will have a negative effect on Egypt's budget because expenditure will be higher uh, as Egypt uh, imports around 12 uh, million tons per year. Uh, now, the country has been trying to increase its production so it can cover at least part of the uh, c consumption uh, from local uh, producers, uh, but it has not increased uh, uh, in, in a way that is considered uh, a positive. Uh, only 10% increase in the last three years of production of wheat in Egypt. Uh, farmers see it as not uh, very profitable uh, to, to sell wheat. Uh, to the local market and they prefer to grow other products. So um, uh, at this point, uh, the increase of, of any prices in wheat will have a negative effect on the government uh, because it will have to continue importing wheat mainly from Russia and France, the biggest exporters of wheat to Egypt. Then you've got Canada as well uh, that comes third. Mm. Well, thank you much, so much, uh, both of you, for those insights. Of course, Yasser Kim joining us in Cairo there and Angelo Coppola in Johannesburg.